Hey you, you know what you're looking at right here? Well, what you're looking at is a new section on the Xbox One store. It's only been up for a little while now, maybe a couple weeks. It's called the Creator's Collection, and you can read what that description says. It says that here, you can discover creative, unfiltered games straight from developers to you. Oh yeah, and that's how we like it. We like our indie games raw and unfiltered. We don't want Microsoft standing in the way between us and our indies. And you can probably figure out what this, what this description means. It means Microsoft is not actually, maybe not going to get that involved in maybe the quality control of the games that appear in the creator's collection. That's what unfiltered means. I mean, there are indie games on the Xbox One already, but they're the type of games that, you know, would have been made by, uh, you know, an actual developing development team uh, with, with a budget, uh, with, you know, multiple people working for the company. Uh, not here. No, this is more like the zero budget type of game with maybe one or two people working on them. That doesn't mean that the games are bad, mind you. It's just that it's a different level of indie game than was available on the Xbox One before. But if you're familiar with the Xbox, this probably sounds familiar. This probably sounds a lot like Xbox Live indie games. And yeah, that does seem to be what this is. It seems like Microsoft is essentially bringing back Xplig. It's not exactly Xplig, because the Xplig library is not on here. These are the games that have been released so far. So the Xplig library did not carry over to this. But if you're looking at some of the names and some of the thumbnails, you're probably you're saying this looks like Xbox Live indie games. I know, I own most of these at this point. Why did I do that? Okay, so obviously I have a problem, and it's a problem that I can only fix by playing these games on video, I guess. is I guess that's what I'm doing. I guess that's why I'm recording this right now. We're not playing all of these right now. Look how many games there are! It's only been up for a couple of weeks, and there's so many games! At the end of Xbox Live Indie Games, like in the last year, there were very few games coming out on it. It's like just a trickle. Um, but apparently... There is interest in uh, getting indie games on the Xbox One, even if there wasn't much interest in Xplig at the end, because a number of developers have posted their games on here, and Microsoft, I guess, is not getting in the way. They're unfiltered indie games straight to us. Oh, but not just when I say us. I'm not just talking about owners of the Xbox One. Because my understanding is that if a game goes on the creator's collection, they have the option of also publishing on Windows 10, the Windows 10 store. So a number of these games should be available on that. So I know that uh, many of you who might have watched me play Xbox Live Indie Games, you might not have owned a 360 yourself. You might not have been able to participate in playing those wonderful games. But... Now, if you have a Windows 10 PC, you have no excuse. Because they're there. Waiting. All you have to do is click on that store, and they'll be there. But what I'm doing is I'm playing them on the Xbox One, because, you know, tradition. So... Like I said, we're not playing all of these right away. Maybe we'll get to them at some point. I don't know. But for this, the uh, first video of whatever this is going to be, we're only going to play four of these. And I picked out four that I think are going to be pretty good representations of what this service seems to be offering. And we're going to start with this. Arcade Hysteria by Only Use My Feet. I decided to start off with something that I think is very representative of the quality that we are used to from Xbox Live Indie Games and how we can see how it carried over to the Xbox Creator's Collection. The description of the game is that after sneaking into an arcade late at night, we find ourselves trapped in an old game called Hysteria. Dodge enemies in Hysteria while collecting power-ups to stay alive in this endless runner. How long can you last in the arcade? The important thing here is the last paragraph that says that this was developed in a 72-hour game jam, which is about the quality we would expect from Xbox Live Indie Games. You know, at least this one, they had a time limit. 
the platforms that this game is available on, you can see on the right, it's available on the Xbox One and the PC, so you could play it right now. Play along with me, of course, is what you'd be doing. We're going to play it. Here we go. Oh, yeah. You can just feel the x bligness emanating off your screen, can't you? It's like we never left. It's like we never stopped playing those indie games on the 360. It's back, and this is what we're doing. But, you know, a very important difference between the Creator's Collection and Xbox Live Indie Games. Xbox Live Indie Games had mandatory demos for all games, and the way they enforced that was that they had an eight-minute time limit. Uh, so you could download any game you wanted off the system without buying it, and you could play it for eight minutes, and then it would stop you. And uh, then, you know, you had to decide whether or not you wanted to buy it to play more. Well, people found that restricting, and the Creator's Collection, well, there is no eight-minute time limit. In fact, there is no demo requirement at, at all. In fact, most of these games don't have demos. This one was free, Arcade Hysteria. I don't believe this cost any money, so that's something to keep in mind as we play this. This did not cost money, but some of the other games do, and a lot of them don't have demos. But I felt that for me, the eight-minute time limit was very useful because it kind of kept me, kind of forced me into keeping things brief, keeping things moving along. So, what we're doing with the Xbox Creators Collection is I am bringing back that eight-minute time limit. I'm going to be playing games, and if I hit the eight-minute time limit, I'm going to stop there, and I'm going to have to decide for myself whether or not I think this game is worth continuing on past the eight minutes. So, I'm going to start off a counter at 480 seconds now. Okay, let's see what the game is like. Do we want to play for eight minutes? And, okay, here we go. So, Endless Runner... I can't move to from the left or the right. I can jump and badly. Jumping feels very bad. I don't like it. I can kind of double jump. Oh, avoid. Oh, oh, no. I got hit by the turtle and the ghost, and now my sanity went down. But I got a heart, and my sanity is back up. But oh, no, my sanity. It keeps going down, no matter what I do. There's Pac-Man. I stomp Pac-Man. So, it's an endless runner. And this, I mean, I think that you already have the idea. Oh, I got this happy mask. You already get the idea of what we're doing. I don't think it actually changes at all from this. You just have to keep running to go as far as we can. Uh, uh, okay, there we go. Got my heart, and now I'm sane again. I have to eat hearts to regain my sanity. That's how it works in real life, too. I don't think there's an objective. I don't think there's a goal. I think it just goes on like this and you can just play it for as long as you want and you know it's not fun to play i don't mean to disparage a game that was made in 72 hours and is available for free but man the controls don't feel good they really don't they could have done better in 72 hours is all i'm saying i don't mean to come off as too harsh on arcade hysteria but it is our first representa rep representative of the Xbox Creators Collection. And of course, they, they want to make a good impression. Though, I guess I did handpick this game to be the first one. But this was one of the first games available when the service went up. Like when Microsoft put up their video that said, Hey, the Creators Collection is now, now a thing. Go see it. This was one of the games that was on there. So, I mean, they knew that. Microsoft knew that. Uh, my sanity is so low, even though I'm getting hearts. I'm still not able to return to the world of the same. I guess I'm trapped in a in an arcade machine, but I don't really remember them doing this in the 80s. I mean, I remember Turtles and Pac-Man and Ghosts. I don't remember uh, the whole insanity thing. It's not something I... I don't think this happened. I don't remember many arcade games in the 80s doing the Silent Hill gimmick. It'd be kind of weird if it, what if they did. Like if Pac-Man actually did that, if you happened to do a certain thing. I'm doing way better at this game than I really should be. Than I really want to, honestly. 
All I have to do is let my sanity go down to the bottom and I can not do this anymore. But for some reason, I feel compelled. There we go. Okay, my problem was solved for me. No, no, we're not. We are not doing that again. So, okay, that's Arcade Hysteria. We saw everything that we, we need to see. We don't need to see anymore. We didn't hit the time limit. That's fine. There's plenty of time left on that time limit. We don't have to run out the clock if we don't need to. That's Arcade Hysteria, our first game of the Xbox Creators Collection. And I think we're off to a good start. The next game we're looking at is Derelict Fleet by Bionic Pony. The description it says down here that Derelict Fleet is a fast-paced space combat game. Well, fast-paced, I don't know about that. Basically, the idea is that we are in a spaceship, we're flying around in space, we have to fight enemy ships and defend, defend other ships. And the reason that I'm showing this is just because we saw Arcade Hysteria just now. I thought we might go on the other end of the spectrum uh, to something that is maybe more technically impressive than most anything else on the service so far, um, kind of in contrast to Arcade Hysteria. Looking at this right now, I'm noticing it says it's only available on the Xbox One. Um, I thought everything was going to go on PC. I guess not. For some reason, this isn't. But we're going to play it. We're going to see what this is like. Now, I mentioned a lot of games don't have demos. And some of the games do cost money. Arcade Hysteria did not cost anything. Dere Derelict Fleet, though, this game cost $10. So let's keep that in mind as we judge it. $10, of course, is much higher than anything on Xbox Live Indie Games. x had standardized pricing. I think it could be $1, $3, or $5. Uh, that does not seem to be the case here. Okay, we're looking at this wonderful menu. Hold on. Let me turn on my time limit. There it is. Eight minutes. Okay. And you can f just... You can see the x in this menu, can't you? We've seen so many x that had menus just like this. A very plain font on a background. Gonna start the campaign. We have missions that we can do. Most of these are locked. Uh, you can see how choppy that scrolls. This seems to be a problem in a number of the Creator's Collection games I've looked at. I don't know why, but a lot of them have problems being smooth. But when we get into gameplay, the polygonal graphics do... They're smoother than that, it seems to be. So I don't know what the deal is with this. That's just weird. We're going to go to Escape, the first mission, and basically the tutorial. We have two ships to choose from, the Hellcat or the Excalibur. Excalibur has more health, but less shields, but and less speed, but more missiles, and a shorter reload time. I'm going to pick the Excalibur, because I do like the missiles. Oh, I thought I pressed the button. There After we go. After only a few years of tension, the Alliance has launched a surprise war against us on our home planet. Outnumbered and outgunned, we have no choice but to abandon our home. We have gathered as many survivors as possible onto a small fleet of ships. Our people already have a colony in deep space. It will be our new home if we can reach it. Check it out. There's story. There's context to what we're doing. Okay, so these are the graphics. So there's a good contrast. Hit an incoming wave of Star Hammer class fighters. You need to protect the fleet. Our weapons were not designed to target ships this fast. It's a good contrast between this and Arcade Hysteria. All right, we got enemy ships coming in. I got a wingman who's going to try to help me out and these enemy ships want to blow up my big ships. You can see that they have health meters on the right side of the screen. If I lose one ship, it's game over. I guess I guess my fleet is not doing too well if we can't if we can't spare one ship. I mean I can die and I'll respawn, but Okay, good. That's one wave down. A wave of Thunderbolt class fighters is inbound. These ships are slower than Star Hammer fighters but have more firepower and can take more damage. Alright. More shooting. More shooting that, that we're doing. So this is basically the basically the tutorial. And I, I have more more things I can do than just use my pew-pew guns, but we'll wait for the computer voice to tell me. And for some reason, when ships get too close, I can't shoot them. I just fly right into them with no clipping. Okay, there we go. I shot that one. Basically, the idea is that I am going to want to... Where's, oh, there it is. I see it. I'm going to want to try to 
destroy all the waves of ships before the next wave shows up. And the next wave is showing up. This class was designed to destroy other fighters like yours. Be careful. And that's bad if too many ships start building up here because then they just gang up on my big ships. And it's going to be all over pretty soon. But, okay, looks like looks like we're doing okay. So I was looking at this and I was thinking, hey, you know, it's nice that one of these games is actually somewhat using the power of the Xbox One over the 360. You know, you didn't see too many smooth polygonal games on the on the on Xplig on the Xbox 360. That the entire fleet survives. If the Alliance destroys even one of our ships, we will have failed. Yeah, lose one ship, it's all over. But then I was thinking that. And then I was thinking, but you know, if I were if I were to say that this looks more graphically impressive than uh Xplig's, Xplig's tended to but then I remembered hey I forgot about Milkstone's games uh which were much more technically impressive than even this that we're seeing so I guess even the graphic proficiency maybe is toned down a bit remembering Milkstone turn red, that means your missiles are locked onto a target and will homing on that target if fired missiles take some time to reload so you should not waste them by firing when you do not have missile lock okay it's mentioning I've missile lock so I can do this I could have done that anytime but I just wanted the, I wanted the computer to tell me it's time to do it I have six missiles and they do recharge over time and it's the easiest way to take out these ships, because as long as I lock on and it turns red, I will hit. Oh. If Got. you're having trouble spotting enemy ships, you can always turn on your targeting computer. This will highlight enemy ships in yellow and friendly ships in blue. So it doesn't tell me which button that is, but it's the L bumper. I can do that. Oh, and things are much clearer now. The only thing is that I would like it if I could just have that on the whole time. The thing is you have to hold down the L bumper to do that, and that's re uncomfortable. I don't really want to play like that. I mean, maybe that's the point. Maybe they don't want you to have it on all the time. Oh, here comes more. Warning. The Yukon structural integrity is at 50%. Right, my big ship's taking some damage. I do have to protect them. At any time by using the directional buttons. I'll keep those fighters away from the fleet. I'll keep those ships off our backs. I'll keep those fighters away from the fleet. Warning. The Alberta's structural integrity is at 50%. And the Alberta's not doing too well, and we have a lot of enemy ships flying around. So, this is kind of the... Like I said, it's the opposite of Arcade Hysteria. It's technically proficient. Um, clearly some time and effort was put into this. But it's kind of dull. Like, I'm not excited at all. Whereas with Arcade Hysteria, it's just like, what, is, what am I even looking at? I don't know. This is just sort of, eh, you know, I, I can, I know what I'm looking at. I'm not especially excited or compelled. Warning. The Manitoba's structural integrity is at 50%. Warning. The Nova Scotia's structural integrity is at 50%. I'll keep those fighters away from the fleet. Well, I would appreciate it if you could. Because these fighters all are, are all over the place. And if this keeps up, we are going to fail this mission. The, the Yukon has been destroyed. Yep, okay, we failed it. The Yukon was destroyed. Well, we only had about a minute left in this uh, in our time limit. We could have gone on to the second mission. Hey, guess what? The second mission, it's not... Like this one, it's not really much different. Cash hidden on an inhospitable planet. We need to remain in orbit while our shuttle retrieves the supplies from the surface. We cannot leave without those supplies. Right, inhospitable planet, right there. Extremely inhospitable, as you can tell. Once again, we have to protect our ships from fighters that are coming in. And, you know, there's some different ships that come into attack, but the gameplay is basically the same. Well, th that's been Derelict Fleet. It, you know, graphically, you look at this compared to Arcade Hysteria, and you think, oh, that's nice, but I'm just not having a speci an especially good time playing it. Um, and again, $10? I, 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 I don't know about that. 
I mean, I'm generally not one to really criticize a game for costing too much. I don't know if... I don't know if this game is going to sell too much on the store is what I'm saying. But what I do know is that our time limit is over. So we are moving on to the next game. On this planet, there must be a command ship nearby. Next up is Dreaming Sarah by Asteristic Game Studio. The description says that it was in inspired by the horror game Yume Nikki. Dreaming Sarah is a surreal adventure platformer game with puzzle elements, an engaging environment, an incredibly diverse cast of characters, and of course, a young girl named Sarah. So name dropping Yumi Nikki was interesting, so I just wanted to check this out, see what it's like, see what, you know, maybe a slightly horror-toned uh, morose adventure game might be, because that's what I'm thinking of when I'm thinking about Yume Nikki. It does say that it is only available on Xbox One. So, again, I don't know why it's not on the PC, but we are going to try this one out. This game, I believe I bought it on sale for a dollar. I believe the actual price is $2.50. So let's see if you feel that it was worth that. From what I've seen of the game so far, very low-res sprite look. Okay. We're going to start a new game, but of course I'm going to start my time limit. Eight minutes. Let's go. Dreaming Sarah finds herself in the middle of this forest. We have to move to get out, get past the title screen we can move we can jump we can duck we cannot crawl we can open up an inventory but we don't have anything in there right now the only thing we can't do is figure out where we are here's someone who's fishing they lost their umbrella yeah, losing something that you need. It's not going to put you in a good mood. They don't want to be bothered by us. We understand. I mean, we could use the help. We'd appreciate it because we don't know where we are. We just woke up here. Oh, no. Can we cross this? Yeah, she can swim. It's no problem. She can't dive, mind you, but she can swim. It's an odd machine here. And a trap door leading down. There's also this, but like I said, we can't crawl, which is kind of odd. It seems like we should be able to do that. We can swim, but we can't crawl. And I can't jump up there, so... I guess we're going to have to go back. probably still in a bad mood, so we'll leave them alone. I mentioned technical issues before with these games. Like, you can take a look at the scrolling and see that it's not exactly smooth, which is odd, considering how you wouldn't think this game is demanding at all from what you're seeing. So, again, I don't really know what's causing that. Here's the thing. We can change its position if we wanted to do that. Here's a fan. It's slowly rotating. It won't hurt us. It's just building up speed, blowing the wind. Oh, look what we found. We got the umbrella. All right, going to equip that. And now we can do this. Sarah must be extremely light if she can be held up by an umbrella like that. Here's another one of these things. And a strange tower. Why don't we go up? We'll enter the elevator. And let's go up to the top floor. Delightful wallpaper. 
someone really knew the aesthetic that they were going for. Very strong, very strong. Here's a cap. We're going to we're going to take up this enormous cap. It's way too big for us to wear. Maybe it belongs to someone. You'd assume that it would be. We can't actually use it for anything, but let's take it with us. I'm just going to say that this is this guy's really rude right here. He's just staring. You don't stare at people. Come on. The other eyes are much more well-behaved. They're just facing forward. And I guess that's the only thing here. So we're going to leave? And maybe we'll find someone who was in this tower at some point and lost their cap. And I do need to change the lights in this elevator. They're flickering on and off. We continue to go. And we can sit in a bench. It's always a good time to sit, but we don't exactly have time. We are on a time limit, remember, now. There's this thing, but it's not doing anything. So let's head back the way we came. We now have an umbrella, and we now have a cap, if we wanted to do anything with these things. And that's picking up speed. Why don't we go back to the fisher person? See if they want their umbrella back. But they're gone. They left. Maybe they caught something, or maybe they didn't catch anything. They left their rod behind, though. I can't take it. It's just there. I'll, I guess we won't need it. But something we could use this umbrella for. There was that jump that we were not able to make back here. Whoops, that's not what I wanted to do. Let's go up here. And across, and there we go. And another one of these things. And a lumberjack... Hello. It's very lonely in the forest, I suppose. Well, that's very nice of him. Got a bag of seeds. Maybe we can plant them somewhere. Well, here's an icon. There's like a fan icon, and that looks like the icon that was on these seeds. Right? Could probably be can't could probably be planted somewhere. And did we just plant them? Maybe we did because now we. I guess we planted the seeds and it created wind that came out of there. Is that how that works? Wouldn't have thought that's how that. Well, here's a crying child. Oh, you don't say. Well, it's your lucky day. Yes, and you probably shouldn't go in the Tower of Eyeballs again. Because I know you were there. And the child goes away and leaves a giant mirror. And I guess we're going to go through here. And we're in a desert. Well, there's so many places to explore. And maybe eventually we'll find our way back. I do notice, though, that time limit is ticking down. And so far, this has been the one that has gone by the fastest to me. Uh, I've liked playing this, and I'm kind of sad to see that time limit is reaching 20 seconds, because I would actually like to play this some more. It's a sailor. A vast. A drunken sailor. What do you do with a drunken sailor? Well, the drunken sailor can tell us that it's easy to get lost. But... Whether or not we're lost, we don't know. Whether or not we can be found, we don't know. Because the time limit is up. Eight minutes is gone. This has been Dreaming Sarah. And so far, this has been the first game where I would say that I would be very interested in playing it past the time limit. And uh, seems like it's worth the 250 so far. But of course, I don't know how long the game is and what exactly happens along the way. So, from what just what I've seen here, I would say that this was a... 
this was a fun little fun time, and maybe I'll play more of this. But time limit is up. We have to go on to the next one. And the last game that we're taking a look at in our first installment of the Xbox Creators Collection is Stereo Aereo by Ludus Games. It says here that Stereo Aereo is an action rhythm game that is inspired by the pop culture influences of the 80s. We all know that anything inspired by the 80s has to be good. So, it has a nice style if you look at that cover. I like the look of it. It's also available on a whole lot of platforms. It's available on Xbox One, on PC, on mobile, on holographic not entirely sure what that is but it's available for that but we're playing the xbox one version right now let's get started for our final game of the session this game by the way i think cost five dollars i feel like i'm not remembering that exactly i think it was five hope i'm not wrong about that you can see the art style a bit better now has a very 80, like the main character in the lower right has a very 80, 80s anime-ish look to him, I would say. Alright, this has a story mode. And, of course, we're going to see what the story is. First, I have to put, pop my time limit. There we go. Eight minutes. Story mode. We are going on medium. We are going to confirm and start a new game. We're going to see what the background of our main characters are. Oh, first, I have to pick, pick a character. I can pick from Rock. I assume his ship is the Rocket. Harmon in the Riff and Soul in the old Orleans. Well, I'm just going to go with the default character right here because I haven't really noticed a difference between playing the three of them. I haven't played it much, but... And what little I did play, I didn't notice a difference. Here's a story. Man, I had the craziest, most disgusting dream last night. Oh, really? Are you sure it was a dream? Yeah, there was a dumpster, a cat from outer space, and a spy dog. When suck Stereo Aereo, my favorite rock stars. I got a gig for you. Sweet. Where? The Galaxy Fest on planet Liquid Metal. You will open the concert for the Glam Stars Band, hippest band in the galaxy. You guys are my only hope. And literally, no one else agreed last minute. Let's rock and roll. Whatever. Let's get this over with. Let's do this. Engine checked. Weapons checked. Music on. All right, we're a future band. We ha we're trying to make it in showbiz, in the music business. So we got an act, got a gig. We have to make it there, though, through rhythm gameplay. Lovely day for rock. You say that every day. Enough talk. Let's do this. Remember, you have to be on time or the deal is off. No worries. We just have to drive while the flux engine is charging and we're off. All right. Well, what I'm trying to do here to get these points, to get these crazy points, I'm trying to go in front of a car and then dodge at the last second. That seems to be how I get points from these cars. But it's easy to get hit by doing that. And if I get hit, I lose health, I lose points, and that's how I can lose. But if I want the big score, I have to get crazy. Obviously. I also have a gun. I can shoot it, but nothing's happening. I guess, you know, I wouldn't actually want to turn my gun on these innocent cars, because they're doing nothing wrong. Like, I'm, I'm doing something wrong. I'm driving against traffic. I'm a danger to the future society. All these other people are doing nothing wrong. Our gang is... Our, our band is obviously a gang of delinquents. I have to focus, to pay attention to the rhythm, to the beat, and then I can get the crazy points. Oop, that, that, that is not how I get the crazy points. Okay, I get the... 
That is a reference. I get it. 80s. Stereo aerial. Pull over. What? Not again. What did we do? You left the bar and didn't pay the check. Again. I thought Sol did. Sol? Me? What? Nah. Dude, we will pay when we come back. No deal. No more warnings. You're all going to jail. Drones initiated and locked on. Shields up. Set your phasers to shred. Okay, clearly we, we walk out of our bar tab all the time, but now I can use my guns to destroy the weapons that the cops are sending after me. So we're resisting arrest, which seems like it might be a bad idea for trying to, you know, have a legitimate career. If we become big stars, I mean, this is going to be on the news. Everyone's going to know that we put these people in danger on the highway by fighting the cops during rush hour, driving against traffic, all because we just didn't pay our bar tab. To get a perfect, I have to shoot the ball when it's between the green lines, but you could probably figure that out. Crazy and perfects is what I'm trying to get. Very cool, bro. You need to practice more. I think it could work. It's time to get real. Working on getting real. I'm trying to be as real as I can be. Evading the cops while also chasing my dreams of music superstardom in the future. And that's it for the first level. So it just seems to... Seems like that's how this goes. We're dodging cars and we're shooting balls in the track as us and our team uh, pop one-liners, which really aren't very funny. It's, it's probably the... It's probably, I would say, the worst... Yeah, before they find you. The worst part of the game the is actually the voice acting. Uh, halfway through. Then let's speed it up. And the dialogue. I like the music. Like, this track's good. And I am actually having fun playing it. And the presentation is... The presentation of the game is definitely the best of any of the Creator's Collection games. It's, like, not even close. Yeah, he is, but I have less than a minute. Or else what? Or else I'll have to turn on the red light. I get references. It's time to get real. Say so only 20 seconds left, so we're not going to complete this level. But you can you get the idea of what this is like, and I think that you get a pretty good idea of what we can expect in the. Uh, coming weeks when it comes to the Xbox Creators Collection, but why do you have to wait for that? You can play a bunch of these games right now. You have absolutely no excuse not to. And I do see the timer has hit zero, so we do have to say goodbye. I'm going to say that of the games that I played, uh, my favorite was Dreaming Sarah. And I'm also having fun playing this. 
So I would say that if this was, I think I paid $5 and I would say this seems like it's, that's an okay price for this as I am having a good time and the music's nice. So that has been the four games that we are starting off with, with the Xbox creators collection. Uh, we will see how many games come out in the future. Will there be a large library in the end, just like there was for Xbox Live Indie Games? Who can say? We will see in the future. But as for right now, it seems like it's a fairly good start. So, I'll see you another time for more of the Xbox Creators Collection. Now, you will pay for your crimes. Deploy your ion bombs and blast them away! Don't let them hit you with those ion bombs. Follow the beat to destroy them. Rock on! Alright, let's do this! 